you talking about? The coin is like this big. You got the battery on too much. What's up, dear friends? We are back. Softball nerds. We Gosh, it's been one. a long time. It's been a long time. I've missed you, Chez. I know. I've missed Allie. Allie's back there. It's been a long the whole, time. The whole, the whole crew's here today. <laughs> and uh, Chez and Allie have been road warriors. Yes, especially Allie. Um, Three weeks. Three weeks? <laughs> Man, and you don't have your pup yet. You got to go pick your pup no. up. Mr. Tobes. Um, got my pup here. <laughs> Chez's pup is right underneath my feet. <laughs> Hopefully she makes an appearance on camera. I'm really hoping. Maybe if uh, I take She's her. napping. She is napping. She found a really good spot. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're back. And we have so much. Whoa. Like, just wrap so your minds up. around Puerto Vallarta. Uh, we covered the Hill and Brand, Citrus Classic, Mary Nutter. Oh, boy. Judy Garman. Judy Garman. Some crazy games. All the softball. Mm -hmm. So Just much softball. Just for you guys. Well, where do you want to... Chaz, you Yeah, start, where you, should we even you, begin? <laughs> you steer us in the right direction, Chaz. You start us wherever... You want to start us. Like, let's just start off talking about what you guys want to talk about, which is the top 25 teams and kind of how, they, what, how they've done in the past month. And without a doubt, if you're not a believer, you better be because Florida State right now is unbelievable. Yes, I have uh, opened up my mouth and inserted my foot mm -hmm. into it with Florida <laughs> Told State. Told you. Um, holy smokes. One of two undefeated teams, which mm -hmm. we'll get to the second one in a little bit. Um, and battle-tested. Their offense, they have four people hitting over 400. Word. No, six people hitting over 400. I Double word. corrected. Double word. Six, six, six players are hitting mm -hmm. over 400 for Florida State's team. Um, leading the country in home runs. Yeah, they are leading in the country in home runs, scoring. Um Callie Harrod is also, she's leading, like, she has 22 stolen bases. Um, and, like, everybody was wondering, how are you going to replace Jesse Warren? Right. That was the concern. And just watch them play, and it, that's all you need to know. Because they've filled the holes. They're deep in every position. If you go look on the Florida State roster, I think most of them are listed as utility players. <laughs> so you have people who come in in one particular position and then they can be playing another position like uh, an Elizabeth Mason or a Carson Gordon. Um, these players that are just athletes that are able to play multiple positions and then Coach Alameda and staff are able to go to any player on the bench uh, either to sub in for a different position or to pinch hit. And I think for them – They've got a really solid group. They're a tight knit group, but they're also super versatile. And I think um, to this point, I don't think people expected them to be where they are now. No, no. Like I said, I certainly didn't. Uh, and you said all of that, and you didn't even mention Megan King yeah. with her 0.72 ERA. She's so pretty good. All of what Ches just said, plus they have a pitcher with a 0.72 ERA. Um, 10 and 0, obviously, because they haven't lost any games. Um, 74 strikeouts. I, where is there a hole in FSU? At, th at this point, no. Look, every team is going to hit their bump in the road, but at this point, the train is coming through. And I think this weekend is really going to be a test for them. They had they head out to Hill and Brand to face off against Arizona, another test for the Seminoles. But I honestly think that they're going to come out on top. Uh, after see seeing them kind of steamroll through uh, Oklahoma and mm -hmm. Tennessee, to me, it left no doubt in my mind what this team is capable of. And it it's a national championship. I think that's absolutely what they're getting for. They handed OU a, a pretty bad law. I mean, OU gave up seven runs against them. It was four to seven. Mm -hmm. um, not terrible, but they gave up seven, seven runs. Yeah, but... Not to only on the offensive end, uh, like you alluded to earlier with Megan King, they also have some fresh arms in the circle that are really impressive. And we know that the Florida State softball program is going to be in good hands when you can go to Katherine Sandercock mm -hmm. or you can go to Mackenzie Herzog, both holding ERAs under two and holding their own against some big-name teams. Yeah, they have. Catherine has 36 innings pitched. 
McKinsey has 17. So they have put up, they've put in some innings and some pretty impressive numbers. I mean, McKinsey Herzog has a zero ERA. Mm-hmm. 17 innings pitch. You know, I'll put that yeah, disclaimer on. A it. top five player still, that we ranked in the in the Hot 100. Yeah, and an, another player that can also hit. She can play multiple multiple positions, and she can also pitch for the Seminoles. Yeah, I mean, I really, I was nothing short of shocked at the loss that they gave UCLA. Like, I really couldn't wrap my head. Uh, Oh no! I'm talking. I'm sorry. That's that's OU. Hey, okay. tripping girl. I'm getting. I'm getting ahead. You're getting ahead. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Look, I'm, 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 I'm already gonna like segue into UCLA. See, see, I tried to. Chess is gonna come in I'm there and fix gonna, it for me. I'm just gonna go, gonna do some patchwork there. Yeah. And fix that up for you because we got a lot to talk about there. They handled Florida. They did. UCLA yeah. handled <laughs> Oklahoma, and then extremely well, handily. Could handily not. Handled handle Megan Bobian's changeup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could not handle that. It's true. Did you see that coming? It's no, I did not I did not see Michigan upsetting UCLA. I didn't see it. I didn't see that either. It blindsided yeah. me. Um, you know, I don't think there are a lot of teams that can go toe to toe with UCLA. I think Florida State is one of them. I th- I give the upper hand to UCLA with that. No. Um, I disagree. I disagree with Chez. We'll see what happens mm-hmm. when and if they play each other. Um, but I, I don't think there are a lot of teams that can, can, can go toe-to-toe with UCLA. I think they just had a rough game, honestly. Look, and, and Megan Faramo didn't throw a bad game. Um, she gave up an untimely home run mm-hmm. and was a clutch home run for, for Michigan. I think what I'm excited about in terms of Michigan is early on in the season, look, they have 11 um, – not 11 um, – eight losses – under uh, that column. And I was worried about where this team is going to be Big Ten because we haven't even gotten to how well some of these other Big Ten programs are playing right now. And granted, Michigan does have a very tough schedule. They do. But some of the some of the losses were unpredictable and uncharacteristic. And I think if you're – if you're Michigan right now, you were excited at this turning point in your season because you need it because a conference is about to start in a couple weeks and mm-hmm. you need to be ready. And right now that they're picked in the polls for to take uh, the Big Ten again, um, so they need to kind of get it going, get the chemistry going. They need to be firing on all cylinders. They need Megan Bobian. Um, they also need the other arms in the circle. So if I'm them, I'm very happy that this these these two wins against Washington and UCLA Mm -hmm. proved to me that we can play with anybody in the country. They have a lot of momentum. Like you said, they had some bad losses, you know, talk about maybe three or so weeks ago at the ACC Big Ten Challenge. They lost to North Carolina twice. They lost to Louisville. But most recently, they have some big wins, and they have a lot of momentum going into conference. I... The Big Ten is going to be impressive, not only with uh, Michigan, but also Minnesota. And hello, let's talk about Indiana. Just mm-hmm. I'm going to deviate for a second. <laughs> you're, already going, you're already going to the, the dark horse talk. I, I'm talk. sorry. I'm going to deviate just a little bit because <laughs> what is happening at Indiana? Tara Trainer. That's what's happening at Indiana. She's tearing it up. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'll tell you that right now. Um, she's 96 strikeouts. She's um, tied for fourth in the, in the nation. Yeah, she's strikeouts. having an incredible season right now. Not only her, that whole – the coaching staff has been able to turn this program around and really rejuvenate them and get them to buy in and believe um, that they're champions. And it's so crazy that they've been able to make this kind of turnaround in just their second season. Last season, we were like, what the heck? Yeah. They're undefeated right now, uh, beginning in the Big Ten – and uh you know it came and eventually came to an end but what they've been able to do is quite remarkable when you think about beating lsu yep i think the big shocker early on was when they when they beat georgia yeah and those are their only two losses folks yeah that's lsu and georgia indiana softball is what we're talking about right now and it's it's i'm sorry their only two losses are to steven Stephen f austin and illinois they beat lsu and georgia huge wins my bad that's all right. We got you covered. Huge wins for them. Uh, and I'm just going to go back to Tara Trent. She has a .66 ERA and 96 strikeouts right now. 
Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I jumped ahead, but I just, I had to, <laughs> I got too excited about Indiana. I just, I got too excited. Um, so we have FSU number one, we have UCLA number two, um, which I just want to make a small note about UCLA's staff right now. Okay. Baby goat is at point point five eight ERA. Megan Faramo, 1.29. And Holly Azevedo, 1.66. Yeah, I think I think that staff is phenomenal. This is the best staff the Bruins have had for a very long time. I agree 100% with you. Uh, a lot of times we've seen UCLA push through to the World Series with that one arm mm-hmm. and uh, kind of struggle in terms of depth. But I think with these three, this can this can set them over the edge. Yeah. Saying they're going to go toe to toe with FSU and they would win. Anyway, we're going to let's move on. let's move on to the SEC. <laughs> SEC, you want to go to SEC? I want to go to the SEC Chez and talk to to about SEC. Alabama. <laughs> let's let's discuss. We have them at number five. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think we discussed Alabama at all preseason. We talked to show. them. I was, you know, they bring in two really exceptional freshmen. With Montana Fouts mm-hmm. and then um, Skyler, Skyler. Montana Fouts has Skyler a Wallace, duh, point, point 0.5 ERA, point, point five one ERA. Mm-hmm. Like she is just killing it. She has seventy four strikeouts. And then you talk about Skyler, also a really good addition. Um, they just they weren't personally on my radar. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think Coach Pat Murphy went out especially for this season and knew that he needed arms to replace Alexis Osorio, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, he loves the up ball, and Montana, Mon- Montana Fouts has a mean one. Yeah. Um, she made the J.O. team along with Skylar Wallace. Uh, these two freshmen, to me, are just impact players. When you look at Skylar's uh, batting average, she's leading the team in uh, batting average. She's got five steals, ten RBIs. And then with um, Montana Fouts, she's just killing it. She's gotten two honors already uh, to start this season. You got something? I think, well, I think Michelle Adams' hair has all we need to say about Fouts. uh, And Fouts is the shit. (laughs) (laughs) She is. We don't have anything else to say. Michelle Adams said it best in our comments. Um, You know, Bessie went a little more PC and she said she's phenomenal. but uh, I think that's I think that's what it, that's I what think it is um, with, with a, her. a couple things just as a precursor to the the season even starting. Fouts took the summer off before she joined Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, she she did have some some things with the Jo team, but for the most part, she wasn't throwing a ton, and I think that really benefited her to yeah. to fully recover and come into the season 100% because the likelihood of her being a starter was high. The girls got some mean stuff. And not only that, they, they added another uh, Juco pitcher to their pitching staff who has been throwing innings, but I think in the long run, Fouts is going to be the workhorse for Alabama in the circle. The girl's gutsy. She's won championships. She's She knows how to compete against the best. I am going to throw a wrench into your parade on – the Crimson Tide for one second. Sure. Um, they are the only other undefeated team, the 20 and 0. Yeah. So FSU and Alabama are undefeated. But are they battle tested yet this season? I don't think so. They're big wins. They're only two big wins. Um, Arizona. Arizona and Minnesota. So I'm not going all in on the Crimson Tide yet. Yeah. Because I want to see what they got. Um, I want to see, see you. I want to see what they got. Uh, but take nothing away from them. They're in our top five. They're number five for a reason on, on our end because they're Yeah, they're I do I do I do want to see them go up against the other top five who have seen each other mm-hmm. and competed. But obviously they're gonna be a team to watch in, in the SEC. Can they take um Florida's SEC crown? I don't know about that. You know, That's, Florida's got a lot to say about it. They Florida have their has own a lot flame. to say. They've about got it. their own flamethrower. In the circle with uh, Kelly Barnhill, who's leading the country in strikeouts. Yeah, she's the only one that has over 100 across all NCAA mm-hmm. D1. She's the only one that's over 100 strikeouts right now. Um, and it's not uh, bad. and she's under. She her ERA is under one. Um, you know, and then you put Natalie Lugo on there, who has the the other part. You know, obviously Barnhill has the lion's share of innings, and then Natalie Lugo, uh, 1.72 ERA. So. 
they're yeah they're not going to go quietly uh, if they're going to go at all in the SEC. They're mm-hmm. not going to be easy to take down. And it's tough to throw it to Amanda Lorenz at the top of the order. She's still one of the most oh fierce goodness. hitters in the country. God, She's it's uh, so fun watching her hit. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No. You gonna are you gonna fangirl on Amanda for a second? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll let really you. Good. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Go Ellie. You had some time. You had some close face up time with UCLA and Florida and yeah. Washington. What were what were your thoughts at, those, at Judy Garman? Those pitchers' pitches are nasty. Mm-hmm. It's it's insane. I mean, you saw you know Rachel Garcia just throwing straight up gas. You know, with her rise balls, and then you know Barnhill doing the same thing. She just has so much spin. So it's just fun just seeing these pitchers like go against each other. Yeah, and then uh, Taryn Alvello for Washington. Yeah. She set the her career records uh, for strikeouts in one Holy game smokes. with 16 strikeouts. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that 16 strikeouts? Get out of here. Yeah. Um, yeah. What a boss. What a boss. What a weekend. Um, mm-hmm. Big time, yeah. So, you know, Pac... Pack is looking good. ACC. Let's talk about SEC. some of these dark horses. You just I'm gonna, gonna skip s- right gonna... over. You gonna skip over my Boomer Sooners? You're gonna skip did over it, my. Did boomer. I? You sure did. I mean, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> just want to talk. About, they're number three. That's all. That's it. That's all you want to say. Shay Knighton's killing it. Actually, she's, she's there up. is something to talk about. There is actually. You can you know. You, please, I'm gonna sit back and listen to you talk. I about have to say, sooners. go for it. I would not anticipate or even fathom that. G. Juarez, her ERA would be above two right now. That's the, that's the shocker. Did you guys think that? Yeah, that's yeah. the shocker for me too. I mean, would right? That, yep. Would that yeah, I think we, we're sh- we're s- stunned. We don't have anything to say. We have li- literally nothing I mean, to say, which Shannon has never happened. Sale is above her right now. Yes, she has ERA, low ERA. Who I think has great stuff. Yeah. And then Mariah Lopez leads OU. Mariah Lopez is ERA. yeah. She's she's throwing her ERA is point eight eight. Um, with uh with about forty innings pitched, uh, that is a surprise to me. Mm-hmm. But you know, Patty's just like sitting back, cool as a cucumber right now. She's not concerned. Yeah. OU's lost to the number one and the number two team. They lost to FSU, um, and uh, and UCLA. They gave up seven runs to each of them. I was really surprised at the the one to seven loss for at UC against UCLA at Mary Nutter. That yeah, one, that I mean, would surprise me. They opened the game with fireworks, with a solo shot. Yeah, and that was it. <laughs> Yeah, that was it. You know, they they UCLA, you got to credit UCLA in that one because they changed up their game plan in terms of pitch calling and and it worked. Yeah. Worked really well. Sure but, did. You know, Patty's just toying with us at the beginning of the season. <laughs> you know, she's just she has everything. She's going to tinker with some stuff. Um, I think she likes when we talk about like doubting them. She, she Yeah, yeah. of course she does. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. She's not even watching. What are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know um, she's not. But she, you know that she's going to have that team at their peak come Super Regionals and Women's College World Series. So uh, I'm not super concerned about the two losses. We will see. I mean, I think the Big 12 is going to be very interesting. The Big this, 12 is going to be so interesting. Look, and I'm just going to segue right into Texas Tech. Okay, let's go. Because they absolutely shocked me with um, – They've only got one loss on the season, mm-hmm. and that's to Washington. They were undefeated for a while. They beat Auburn. They beat ASU. They beat Oregon. And I think it's time to talk about this Red Raiders team as a possible top three finisher. In Let's the Big go. 12. We're I, doing it. I mean, this team, Jessica Hartwell batting nearly 400, five home runs, 19 RBIs, and then – not not too far down, Trinity Edwards, a transfer from Mizzou, batting 362, seven jacks, and 19 RBIs. I mean, this team can crush. And then when you look in the circle, it it's not too bad. You've got Aaron Edmondson, uh, 1.82 ERA, uh, just over 61 innings pitched, 72 strikeouts. This team can play. We saw them beat Oregon. Bessie has a good question. Can their pitching hold up? I think, I mean, that's going to be everybody's question, right? Come on. You have a good question, Bessie. I mean, it's, like- it's everybody's question. It's a question we have with Oregon. Right. It's a question we have with Tech. It's a question we have with Indiana, Wisconsin, Stanford, right? Is the pitching going to hold up? And, and we'll see. I mean, it's going to really depend on how many innings 
the these girls pitch how healthy can they stay throughout the season a lot of uh different variables but we will see so far they're out to a great start and i i think they have a real chance to edge out baylor in uh in the standings for for big 12 100 percent agree with that um so that's your first dark horse alert um we kind of already touched on dark horse number two um indiana beat lsu uh, and Georgia, they have some tough. Lo- they have some bad losses to SF, uh, SFA and Illinois State, mm-hmm. um, but they're extremely impressive. Yeah. So far this season, they, they you know they only have those two losses of seventeen and two. Um, what do you see with Indiana? I think they're a team that comes out with a lot of energy, and they like pounce on you right out of the gate. They will run on you. They will play small ball. They'll place it in the gap. They're not. I mean, I don't see them really. Uh, hitting a ton of home runs, but that's not really their game. They're going to constantly put pressure on the defense. They're going to play solid defense. They're a team that goes on the field to match the intensity of their coach. And it's no surprise that this team is kind of keeping the momentum coming from the uh, from the previous year going into this year. And the Big Ten is really exciting for me. Uh, when you think about uh, Indiana entering the top 25 Mm -hmm. we've got michigan kind of like a staple wisconsin we're talking about minnesota we're talking about northwestern is absolutely a team that you can't sleep on because they're very talented um so this will be an exciting year in the big 12 and big 10 in my opinion yeah i'm i'm super excited to see more um parity parity uh, across the the five conferences you have a acc team sitting number one right now you know, it's not five more Pac-12 or SEC schools. You got a couple SEC, you got some Big 12, you got some, you know, we're talking about Big 10 schools playing the dark horse and the upset. It's it's actually quite fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you mentioned Wisconsin. Um, they're dark horse number three. You know, Chez couldn't just pick one dark horse this week. She has four. <laughs> so we're going to let her go with all four of them. Uh, Texas Tech. Indiana, Wisconsin is dark horse number three. Mm-hmm. Beat um, Texas. They beat Texas. It's pretty good. That's all she has to say. <laughs> but she is the fact that she's making a point Look, about I'm not a team elaborate. beating Texas. Uh, I'm not gonna elaborate. On she's that. pointing out that her alumni, her alum, you know, her alumni everybody's got to lose at some point in the season. Okay, so let's just get over it. Uh, <laughs> and then Stanford. Stanford's your fourth. Uh, Stanford. Holy cow, would we ever think about What kind of turnaround has Stanford done in the last... They beat LSU, Michigan, and Northwestern. That's insane. It's unbelievable. Right? (laughs) Right? Are we right? Unbelievable. 16 and 2. Yeah. Stanford, let's wrap... Let's bring this full circle forever. Stanford Stanford is 16 and 2 right now in the season. This is crazy. We're bringing it full circle just for you. That's the deal. With yeah, there are two losses. Who's, who's your favorite dark horse? Oh boy, my favorite. We still need to work on the the dark horse. You know what? Uh, like in terms of tugging at the heartstrings, or like in terms of talent, both. Okay, we'll do heartstrings first. I just really love Indiana. Oh, Allie and I, <laughs> Allie and I got to 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 visit the program. And you can't help but like be motivated being around that club. They Man. are they they work their buns off, but they have fun doing it. Right. They right just now, have I'm just an amazing atmosphere over there. Like I don't know, we were having fun the entire time with them. Yeah, it was a good time. I'm just imagining the Instagram story hearts filter over yeah. the Indiana logo right yeah. now. Yeah, honestly, you too. am I gonna do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is Ellie gonna do that later? Look for it because she's gonna do it later. <laughs> um, and then in terms of talent, I think Texas Tech. They really impressed You're me. You're really impressed with Texas Tech, mm-hmm. aren't you? I am. They could flat out swing the bats. Dangerous. That's all you need to know about Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I have the same question. Will the pitching hold up? But I think that's a question you can ask. It's fair. Any, any of the teams sure. across the country, you know? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Wow. I don't even... I need to breathe after that. Mm-hmm. That was exciting. So, uh, sometimes, not sometimes, when we go out to these events, we film a lot of cool things and just want to let you guys know about them. Uh, We've got a hitting series coming out uh, with Carlton Salters from UTSA. You may or may not follow him on Twitter. He's got some pretty uh, 
great knowledge to share about hitting. We've got some exclusive uh, features on Rachel Garcia, Savannah go. Jake, Jake Wish, uh, Megan Wiggins. We've got some Catching Up with Chess pieces Should we coming keep out. Going? I, maybe the folks want to see Catching Up with Sarah instead of Catching Up with Chess. <laughs> maybe. Maybe Catching Up with Allie. Let us know. Yeah. How about Sarah you, Salt Sings? Yeah. You, hey. <laughs> maybe that one doesn't. Little Sal- salty here. time with Sarah. Yeah, um, salty time with Sarah for sure. <laughs> let us know who you. Let us know. Yeah. Catching up with Chez or salty time with Sarah. Mm-hmm. Allie, we'll think of something for you. Yeah. Um, you so get much into the events. So much, so much, and we're not even done with events. We're yeah. not done with it. We're still going. You folks. know, if you're tired of hearing about D1 softball, well, guess what? You can watch D2, D3, uh, NAIA, JUCO. Juco, they're all, all in the spring games all day, every day until the end of the month. She told me to talk about events, but she's going to. Yeah. It just sounded better when I said it. Uh, we also have the East End Invitational yep. coming up with Cal State Fullerton. You're going to see uh, Boston University, DePaul, uh, Harvard, Charleston. Fullerton? Fullerton? Yes, that was the first name I okay. said. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that you didn't miss it. And All then, right. All right, so Chez and Allie's All love right, affair. So Chez and Allie's love affair with the Big Ten is going to continue because we have a whole bunch of Big Ten yep. uh, programming. That's, that starts next week. Um, Big Ten conference softball, very exciting. We'll have the Big 12 uh, tournament on flow as well. And Allie and I are going on a road trip in April, which should be fun. We'll let you guys know soon about that. But I won't be there. Yeah, no salt. No, no, no salt. salt on that road trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all, you got anything else? I no, just stay salty, my friends. See you guys. <laughs>